Okay, when we left off, we had drawn a line, and because we were using, uh, I think it's set interval. Let's double check that. Uh, yeah, set interval. Because we're using set interval, we were redrawing that same line, and somebody had the question, why are we redrawing the same line in the same place? Well, the reason we're starting with that is we would like to be able to animate, which involves drawing a picture, then erasing it, and then drawing a slightly different picture, and then you'll see the difference over time as an animation. Uh, if this is too slow, these videos, if these videos are too slow, there's a speed control in YouTube. You can go up to two times speed in the default YouTube, and then there's also an extension you can get, which will allow you, I think it's a Chrome or Brave extension that allows you to go up to five times speed. I thought it might be good to explain why we're using functions. We could just put all of this um, code in the same you know, in the top level of the file and not even in a function. Um, code that is outside any function in the file still runs as soon as you, as soon as the browser loads up the JavaScript file, it runs it. Most of what's happening when it gets run is it just, uh, I think there's a compile stage. You can see if you do, um, if you go into um, performance, you can profile it and you'll see that there's some, there's a compilation stage in there where it uh, turns your text JavaScript into something that is a little more easier for the computer to use. Um, that would be called just-in-time comp compilation or JIT. Uh, we could just put all of our code in the top level, but as I said, as soon as it loaded up that file, it would run that code. And we want to control when the code is run. We don't just want to load it once when the file is loaded. We want to load it in response to an event. In this case, we want to have we want to wait until the entire page is loaded so that the canvas exists. Then we want to call the start function, and then we want to have um, we want to have these uh, the draw call called the draw call called once every second so we can animate. If we just put everything in this top level here and just started doing you know ctx dot you know begin path or whatever, we'd only be able to draw once. So if we put in a function, we can recall that function uh, over and over again. And a function is just a named piece of code that you can run by calling the name. So here we have up here a function called canvas setup. When we do canvas setup and we put these parentheses at the end, this is where you put any variables that need to go to that function, like the set interval. You need to tell it what to do, which function, and when to do it. Those would go in there. If you have no arguments or parameters, then you still have to put these parentheses and then uh, JavaScript will recognize this function name with some parentheses as a call to that function. So it will run all the instructions in that function with any parameters that you specified. So every time uh, set interval calls draw, uh, well, when we call start, start calls canvas setup, that'll run this function. And then every time set interval calls draw, this draw function will be run. So there's some a way we can get a certain set of instructions to be called multiple times. Uh, anything else I needed to cover? Um, I, I thought about mentioning target audience. I think by this time you'll know if you're the target audience. Um, but by all means, if there's uh, some help you need or something different you want to see, uh, leave some comments. So we're drawing now. We have this paused. And if we unpause it, we can see, well, uh, let's see, our console this is where when you do um, these console.log lines, it comes out the console here. And we can see this number updating because we're writing out to console the same exact message every second. So it's just incrementing it rather than filling up our screen with draw called. And here's the canvas width and height that we output uh, when we set up our canvas right here. And uh, oh, you might notice I put a keyboard down in the bottom. So if you're curious about uh, how I'm navigating with just the keyboard, I'm not using a mouse. Um, when, you, when you see my, when you don't see my mouse move, but I'm still moving around in the code, you can you can see what I'm doing on the keyboard. So you can see these these keys are being pressed. All right, so we are drawing the same thing every time. So before we get into drawing the game, before we get into making the our game look like this. Let's maybe do, uh, let's play with some animation. So let's, um, let's create a variable um, called uh, uh, x uh, diff delta, delta x, we'll call it delta x, and we'll set it to equal zero. And then whenever we call draw, we're going to do our draw. And then we're going to say, uh, Delta x 
plus equals one. Plus equals is the same thing as saying delta x plus delta x, uh, sorry, delta x equals delta x plus one. So the plus, the plus equals one is just a shortcut for saying delta x equals delta x plus one. You might think it would be more obvious if it was equals plus, um, but it's not, so who knows why. So let's add one, and then what we'll do is we will change our x coordinate to be x plus delta x. Actually, let's let's really have fun, and let's say minus delta x here. All right, so we'll go back to our screen here, and we're gonna refresh. We're gonna see that our draw call, it increments the x every time, and in fact, we can go over to sources and we can see delta x. If we pause this, we can go see delta x and it tells us that it's 14. So we're, every time we run this, we're adding 14 to the x coordinate going <clears throat> away from the screen here and we're subtracting 14 this way. So we're getting these lines that is, have the same y coordinates but different x coordinates. So now we're animating. You can see that we're, we're um, drawing different lines. So let's pause that. Um, and you can absolutely, I would encourage you, pause here and go play with that. Like just play with the idea that you can draw lines and change the x and y coordinate based on whatever it is you want. You can use the sine function, the cosine function. You can change both of these. Like let's just play with, uh, let's do maybe minus delta x, oh, detla and then plus delta x, let's play with that. You could spend a lot of time just playing with this and that's totally fine. That's what I have done. That's how I know to do a lot of this stuff. So this one is going up and this one is going down. So the lines are, are rotating and getting longer. And if you wanna, um, just while you're playing with this, you can actually go up here. If you wanna uh, animate faster, you could do this every 100 milliseconds, which is one tenth of a second. So let's see what happens when we do that. So now we're going a lot faster. And you can change the color based on this. You can do all sorts of fun stuff um, by animating these lines. So that's the basics of animating. Um, this is not um, uh, clearing the screen though before each draw. So maybe let's try clearing the screen so we get just one single line that's rotating. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go back to my other code and I'm gonna get the, there's probably a clear, yeah, there's a clear function I created. I misspoke last video. I said I was having mouse issues, I'm not. I'm having the, I'm using command uh, tilde to switch between windows of the same application, but I keep hitting command tab, which on the Mac switches between applications. So let's do a clear function. And I didn't put that into the right buffer. And I did it again. Let's see. There we go, function clear. So this is another function we're gonna call. This is a global variable, context, uh, CTX for context. We're gonna set this fill style to black. Well, we're drawing in, well, actually, now that we're gonna draw uh, black, let's make the line white. So we're gonna draw a black background from zero, zero. So this is the top left of the screen to width and height, which are the canvas width and height. And I could rename these to, uh, this is a comment slash slash. I could name this to um, like canvas, like W equals canvas width. That might be better because then it would be more obvious what this is. But if we're using width and height a lot as as mathematical values, it's going to be easier if we just have W, um, W, H, X, Y, things like that. So, uh, so let's fill the entire thing with black every time and then we'll draw a white line. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll do refresh and oh, we'll probably have an issue here. Oh, so we're drawing every hundred milliseconds. That's fine. So that worked. Uh, but we're not getting what we expected. So let's go see if I saved the file because that's something I don't always do. Yeah, I'm gonna move this over here because I'm not using 
this area of the screen quite as much. And let's see, oh, we're not calling clear, duh. So whenever we do, uh, whenever we call draw, let's first call, well, actually, yeah, let's call clear. We'll flip back here. And this is what programming is like. So now you can see that every time we, every 100 milliseconds, we're redrawing this black square over whatever was there, and we're drawing a white line on top of it. So it looks like a single white line is rotating, but you and I know that we have drawn, you know, by this point, you know, tens of these lines. But since we can only see the top one, then it looks like that line is rotating. So uh, just for fun, let's go back and change delta x to be something, um, or let's go back to where we change delta x. This, this really, this value should be called delta x. Um, let's change that to 20, and we'll see it be really wild. So there you go. So you, you saw when you refresh, it grows pretty quickly. All right, we don't need that to keep going. Wasting CPU power, not that we don't have enough, but um, I'm recording this. So that's how we get animation. So I'll leave it there. I'm not sure what time I'm at, but that's probably enough. Now we know how to draw a uh, redraw background, coloring over anything we had there previously, and then drawing whatever is our, you know, whatever our topic is, whatever whatever it is that we want to animate, we draw that on top, and then it looks like um, we get a, sort of like a new animation cell or frame, as if you were doing a flipbook. Um, you get a new page in your flipbook every time that you have your interval call called. All right, that's it.